Hey everybody, it's Ridge here from Crash Course Hobbies again. Uh, we're gonna do a quick video on just basic assembly for your Warhammer models. Now, when you first get a kit, um, like this Combat Patrol, for example, I wanna show you guys how the instructions work, and then we'll talk about uh, how to actually go through and assemble. We're gonna use this uh, just basic push fit um, Necron Overlord model. Uh, but before we get into all that, uh, do have a video talking about the basic tools you're going to need to get started. We'll just quickly review those here. I've got uh, just a set of hobby snips, and I'll have links to this stuff for you all down in the description. But you're going to need some hobby snips for clipping things off the sprues here. Um, you're going to want to have either some kind of cheap X-Acto knife or a retractable hobby knife, something like that for scraping your mold lines just to clean things up a little bit. Um, you're going to want some glue. I like Tamiya extra thin plastic cement. I much prefer that over super glue. Although if that's all you have, you know, that's fine too. And then uh, little sanding sticks do help a lot for getting in little nooks and crannies and kind of polishing things up. But to get started, a couple things I wanna go over for y'all because sometimes if you buy your first kit uh, and you look at the instructions, it can be a little bit confusing. You'll notice that there's usually multiple options for certain types of uh, figures, whether it's squads or weapon options, and they'll usually be color coded. So for our shield captain here, there's a blue variant and then there's a green variant. And when you choose whichever one you want to build, you just want to make sure that whenever you get to areas here with this little three uh, shield symbol, that means you need to make a choice and you know they're color coded as well to help you. So if you choose a green here where you've got the sword, you want to make sure you come down to where the green is here and Put the shield with it as well uh, so little things like that to watch out for that's what those symbols mean and it always helps to kind of flip through the book and uh, you know check out your options before you start building so that you don't get yourself in a position where you're kind of in trouble uh, after you've already started gluing stuff together so same thing here with the different options uh, and then to kind of back it up a little bit you'll notice when you start pretty self-explanatory but there's going to be numbers for each sprue part and that will correspond to uh, numbers that are printed onto the actual sprues themselves. And they usually be right next to the part, pretty self-explanatory there. But just wanted to point that out before we kind of dive into actually assembling and some best practices. So looking at our Overlord model here, I've already clipped out the glaive as just a kind of a way to, um, you know, practice making sure the camera and everything was gonna see. But what we wanna do at this point is once you've had your instructions, and this guy's just a handful of parts, so we don't really need to look at them, but let's say we wanna cut out the body of our overlord here. What you wanna do is you'll notice on the sprue clippers, there's two sides. There's gonna be a flat edge on one side, and then kind of this like edge here. That's not what you're gonna wanna use. You want the flat edge, and you're gonna butt the flat edge up to the actual part of the model. And you wanna to try to get it as close to it as you can without digging into and damaging it. And then you're just gonna clip it off. As easy as that. And you'll just go around clipping all the bits, making sure that you're not accidentally clipping off parts of the model, especially on some bits that are kind of finicky. You wanna make sure that you're not damaging your mini. It's always better to leave more material on, like in this shoulder plate, for example. Uh, I left more material on because it's easier to remove it with your hobby knife later than to try to fill in a gap if you cut it too deep. So once you've got your pieces cut off, the next thing I like to do is take a hobby knife or an X-Acto uh, and use the dull edge. You can see this one's not sharp because I only pretty much use this one for mold lines. But you'll notice on your sprues, running kind of parallel with the actual sprue itself because it's a plastic mold. So it, it comes together, they shoot the plastic in. And generally along these midlines, there's gonna be tiny little hairline kind of like um, raised edges. These are mold lines. If you take your hobby knife, you just kind of scrape along them. You can easily remove most of these. You can also use your hobby knife here to kind of come in. You can see where there's uh, kind of uh, like a little piece of plastic there that's sticking up. And I'll just take my hobby knife nice and easy and kind of scrape that along there just to remove that little piece. And some of these, especially with mold lines, they're not as obvious when you have a gray unprimed model, but then you hit it with some primer or especially after hitting it with some paint and it's, 
it's a lot more obvious, especially with like lighter colors and things like that. And then it's a pain in the butt to try to go back and fix them. Another thing you can do is take your sanding stick and for harder to reach areas or like for this uh, leg armor here, I could just take it and because it's foam and soft, I can just hit it on there and go around and kind of clean that up. Another cool thing I wanted to show you all is if you take your plastic cement, aside from just using it to join your models together, I like to use it for cleanup too. And if you take it to where I just sanded this and it's kind of rough, you can sort of just paint the plastic cement over it and it will re-smooth that part back out again because it's kind of melting all that area that we just ground up. So it's a nice little way to clean up your piece without um, you know too much effort. So I'm just gonna go through and get the rest of these pieces clipped, cleaned up, and we'll talk about actually assembling. And you can see, for example, here where this finger is kind of attached, I just wanna be careful and cut the actual sprue and not cut the finger off. And I can clean that up later, no problem. Same with where this kind of hose is coming out. These kind of areas are really easy to accidentally clip off and kind of mess up your mini. And just go slow, you know, when you're first doing this, um, it's easy to mess up. So, you, like I said, you'd rather not clip off stuff than clip off too much. So I'm gonna clean up the rest of these pieces and we'll just talk about a couple quick assembly tips. So uh, going through and cleaning mold lines, like on this glaive, it's gonna be again running on the midline, so just gonna lightly run my hobby knife up and around all these edges. A lot of times you don't need to be super neat with this. And a lot, you know, they're definitely gonna be um, more pronounced imperfections than others. A lot of these are pretty clean models and don't require too much. So I just lightly drag the, uh, the knife along it just to get rid of any kind of stray mold line bits. And then of course, if you see some that are a little bit more noticeable, you can definitely get in there and, and take care of those too. You can see this bit of the shoulder pad where I left a little bit too much material extra from clipping it because a lot of these curvy edges and stuff, they're hard to get to. So we can do that. We can just make it even easier and just hit it with the sanding stick and go through and we'll clean that up again a little bit more here in a second. I like to pay extra attention to kind of the top of the model, around the head, the face especially, weapons. Those tend to be the areas that people look at the most. So if you don't want to spend the time to go through and clean up every single mold line and every single edge where you clip your sprues and stuff like that, that's okay. Especially if you're building an army of like Tyranids or Orcs or something where you have just a ton of minis that you're gonna be going through. Just go through and maybe clean up just the face and the weapon, because again, those are the areas that people are gonna look at the most. So if they pick up the mini and look at it, the chances are that they're gonna see a big mold line as if it's right there on the face or on the weapon. So get these areas cleaned up here, and let's talk about gluing it. So, okay, so now we're gonna go on to assembly. Now, one thing you can do uh, is with, especially with certain little things like this where there's kind of a tricky bit in there is I like to pre-fit it together before I do any gluing. So you can see here we have to kind of thread this arm up into the neck and then glue them together and then attach it to the torso. So see I've already kind of dry fit those pieces there. I can just take my plastic glue and dab it in where those pieces meet and it will just fuse them together. The nice thing about this is if you have areas where maybe you didn't clean it up enough with your hobby knife or there's like a little bit of a burr of material there and when you go to fit it together it doesn't fit flush then you can take care of that before you try to start gluing it together and not run into any issues. So do the same thing here now that I've got that those two pieces together I can just dry fit them push them together Take my plastic glue, paint that over. That'll also smooth out where I was sanding everything. And then come down and just hit all these little areas where there's cracks. Hold it together for just a few seconds. The nice thing about plastic glue versus super glue too is it dries really quickly. So you don't need to spend all this time holding everything down. It's much easier to use. 
So then this last piece here, um, with the hole there, I would just slap a little plastic glue on it to begin with, because I know this piece is gonna fit in here. Pop it in, hold it, good to go. And then for the arm, same thing, a little dab, pop it in, let that sit for a minute. Um, and then we can dry fit this little piece together where they go. Easy as that. And on the back here, a little dab. Sometimes models will have these little hoses and things, so you may have to hold it a little bit longer to get it to really fit on there good. But essentially that's all there is to it. Putting it together, go slow, take your time. One thing to be careful of is if you are using plastic glue and you can see up top here where I've got a little bit of extra painted on that shoulder pad to kind of clean up where we sanded, don't touch it with your fingers because it'll actually put a fingerprint melted into the plastic because it's still it's still wet and sort of dissolved from the glue. If that does happen, you can usually get rid of it by either sanding a little bit more and painting over it with the plastic cement, or you could even just paint over it and hope that it takes care of it, but it's just one thing to try to avoid. And then once you actually have your mini built, if it has the little pegs to go into the bases, then I usually recommend not gluing it onto the base for painting because you can always pop it off. And if you want to spray from underneath or if you want to be able to paint in here, that's a lot easier. If you don't have minis with the little push fit pegs, then usually what I recommend is taking like a little bit of blue tack here or something and just push it on the base and then you can just stick it down onto the, the base until you're ready to actually do basing because sometimes it's easier to stick it on after the fact. But anyways guys, that's a quick and dirty tutorial on how to build your minis properly. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any feedback for me on things you think that I missed. And of course guys, make sure you're supporting your local stores. We need safe places for us to go and play and hang out and nerd out about our hobbies. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.